Hello everyone, welcome to Medlocus. Today, in this video, we are going to learn about rectus sith, its formation and its contents. So, without further ado, let's get started. Before going to rectus sith, we need to have short knowledge about muscles of anterior abdominal wall and their arrangement in abdomen. These are the muscles of anterior abdominal wall which are attached to linea alba. Linea alba is thin band of white connective tissue that runs down the front of your abdomen. Now we will separate each of these muscles from linea alba and be familiar with their names. We have aponeurosis of external oblique muscle, aponeurosis of anterior and posterior lamina of internal oblique muscle, rectus abdominis muscle and aponeurosis of transversus abdominis muscle. Now we will compare these muscles and aponeurosis of muscles with the picture given aside and try to find out their arrangement in anterior abdominal wall. By the comparison, we can see external oblique muscle at anterior most part, then internal oblique muscle and then transversus abdominis muscle. You can pause this video and compare them as well. Let us now arrange these muscles and reflect all the muscles and aponeurosis of muscles to the left side so that we will be able to see how they are arranged in anterior abdominal wall. The aponeurosis of flat muscles of anterior abdomen and rectus abdominis muscle are numbered from 1 to 5 in this picture according to their arrangement from anterior to posterior. Look at the picture carefully. Aponeurosis of internal oblique muscle in the middle is divided into anterior and posterior lamina. You can compare the arrangement of muscles from this picture too. Pause the video for some seconds and have a look at the muscles and try to figure out how they are arranged from anterior to posterior. In number 1 or anterior most part of the anterior abdominal wall, we have aponeurosis of external oblique muscle. In number 2, we have anterior lamina of aponeurosis of internal oblique muscle. In number 3, we have rectus abdominis muscle. In number 4, we have posterior lamina of aponeurosis of internal oblique muscle. And in number 5, we have aponeurosis of transversus abdominis muscle. Now we will understand the concept of rectus sith. By the name, rectus means rectus abdominis muscle and sith means the aponeurotic sith of abdominal muscles which we are seeing arranged anterior and posterior to rectus abdominis muscle. The aponeurosis of these muscles enclose rectus abdominis muscle in either side of linea alba which is known as rectus sith. Now, we will learn about coastal margin and arcuate line. For that, let us reflect aponeurosis of external oblique muscle at first. You can see coastal margin here. The coastal margin is a cartilaginous arc formed by the medial margins of cartilage of lower 3 to 4 ribs, that is, mostly ribs 7th, 8th, 9th, and 10th. Now, talking about arcuate line, it is the curved line which is present posterior to rectus abdominis muscle between umbilicus and pubic symphysis. We will learn the importance of this line in the later part of this video. It is also called semicircular line of Douglas. You must also remember arcuate line is the point at which the inferior epigastric artery and vein perforate the rectus abdominis muscle. We will also learn more about these vessels in the later portion of this video. Now we will talk about the formation of rectus sith above the coastal margin. Let us reflect and draw the aponeurosis of external oblique muscle. Again rectus abdominis muscle is reflected and drawn. See now you just see the ribs posterior to rectus abdominis muscle above the coastal margin. Let us draw the ribs as well. Now we will talk about the formation of rectus sith between coastal margin and arcuate line. Let us first reflect and draw the aponeurosis of external oblique muscle. Now we see anterior lamina of aponeurosis of internal oblique muscle. It is also reflected and drawn. Again let us reflect 
rectus abdominis muscle and draw in our schematic diagram. Again, we will reflect posterior lamina of aponeurosis of internal oblique muscle and aid it in our schematic diagram. Aponeurosis of transversus abdominis muscle seen posterior to aponeurosis of internal oblique muscle is also reflected and drawn. Now, we will talk about the formation of rectus sheath below arcuate line. As we did before, let us first reflect and draw the anterior most muscle of anterior abdominal wall that is aponeurosis of external oblique muscle and draw its schematic diagram. Now, let us reflect aponeurosis of internal oblique muscle and draw it. Aponeurosis of transversus abdominis muscle seen posterior to aponeurosis of internal oblique muscle is also reflected and drawn. Again, rectus abdominis muscle is reflected and drawn. After we reflect rectus abdominis muscle, we see fascia transversalis. Let us draw that too in our schematic diagram. Now, we will talk about the content of rectus sheath. Of course, no doubt, rectus abdominis muscle is the content of rectus sheath. Also, pyramidalis muscle also comes under the content of rectus sheath. Pyramidalis muscle is present in anterior and lower part of rectus abdominis muscle. We also have two arteries and two veins in the rectus sheath. They are superior epigastric vein and artery and inferior epigastric vein and artery. Superior epigastric artery is the branch of internal thoracic artery and it enters into the rectus sheath from coastal margin and passes deep to rectus abdominis muscle. Similarly, inferior epigastric artery is the branch of external iliac artery and it enters into the rectus sheath by passing in front of arcuate line. These arteries anastomose with each other within the sheath and supply the rectus muscle. Also, there are six thoracic nerves in rectus sheath. It includes lower five intercostal knobs and one subcostal nerve. Thank you for watching the video. If you loved the video, don't forget to subscribe the channel and comment down below.